In this third video in our series of tutorials on using ForeFlight, delivered by Flight Insight, we're going to take a deep dive into setting up your downloads and aircraft profiles. We've covered some of the fun stuff in earlier videos, like the Maps view, and now we're going to look under the hood at some essential settings you'll want to have selected during your first usage of ForeFlight Mobile. Here, we've created a route from White Plains, New York to Martha's Vineyard. We'll touch on creating routes in our next video. In fact, if you want to dive into any topic now, you can pull up the pilot's guide from the documents folder and search for it or find it in the table of contents. You can also watch tutorial videos on the discover tab that you can find within the app. For any flight that we're planning, we want to make sure that we have all the most up-to-date charts and information to reference in flight. You most often won't have the opportunity to access the internet to do so while you're already in flight. ForeFlight will automatically stream most types of charts and data to your device while it's connected to the internet, but you'll need to select which of these resources gets fully downloaded for offline reference. Let's view and manage our downloads by tapping More and then Downloads. There's a small set of required resources which ForeFlight automatically downloads, such as the airport and nav database and terrain and obstacle data. If you have Jeppesen charts with your ForeFlight subscription or linked from your Jeppesen account, these will automatically be downloaded as well. To download anything else, we'll need to use both the Data Settings and Region Settings menus. The Data Settings menu lets us select which types of charts and data to download based on what we'll want to have access to during a flight. For example, if we plan to do a lot of IFR flying, but our aircraft isn't capable of making it into the flight levels, we might enable downloads of IFR low charts, but leave IFR high charts unselected. Below these options are the high resolution base map and terrain toggles, which should be automatically enabled for your region, but it's a good idea to enable any nearby regions as well. These depict ground features and cultural elements on the base map, which is what you see with no other map or chart layers enabled. Any chart and data types we've enabled in the data setting here will only download in the regions we have selected. So let's go back into the downloads view and then tap into the region settings. We can go into any of the countries or areas supported by ForeFlight and included in our current subscription plan. Let's drop into the United States to see regions available to us there. Each state or region will have a data size based on the data selections we made before. Larger regions will of course require more space. We could select a few regions here. Let's say we're based in New York. It's a good idea to have that state, surrounding ones, and any other states we frequently fly into selected for download. Not all regions support all the data types we selected. For example, there aren't any helicopter charts available in a few of these states, and that'll be called out. With everything selected, if you go back into the Downloads view, you could see in the lower left the number of items and total size of the download. ForeFlight will warn you if the size of your selected downloads exceeds your available storage space, so you can make changes accordingly. The chart and data types being downloaded are the required charts and Jepson plates we already mentioned, the high resolution charts, airport diagrams and documents, terminal procedures, and VFR and IFR charts. When the download's complete, your selected data in your selected regions will be populated on your device and ready for your flight. Of course, you could still choose to download other charts and data in addition to what's been gotten automatically. We selected some states around us in New York, but we didn't select Massachusetts, which we'll need for our flight to Martha's Vineyard. The pack feature is an important tool we should use prior to every flight. If we go into the flight plan tab, we see the suitcase icon at the bottom. This looks at your route and downloads any charts, weather forecasts, airport and notams, and more that apply to the route based on a corridor extending 25 nautical miles on either side and 50 nautical miles around each airport. Because our route takes us into Massachusetts, which we didn't select in the regions, the pack feature will pull in everything for there. So in this way, by selecting pack, we're not only ensuring we get the most up-to-date information for the flight, but it acts as an insurance that we have the necessary charts and data for every geographic area we'll be flying in. You should use the pack feature prior to every flight while you're still connected to the internet. The pack data is listed separately in the downloads view in a group called packed and unselected regions. This extra data won't automatically update like your other selected regions and data, so if you no longer need the extra data, and want to free up storage space, you can use Swipe Delete to get rid of it, or let ForeFlight delete them automatically after they expire. 
When we explore flight planning in the next video, a key component will be the characteristics and performance of our specific aircraft, which we need to create in ForeFlight to use for flight planning. If we tap the More icon, then select Aircraft, we can choose to add a new aircraft profile. We can enter our registration number and other details, and then select Aircraft Type. If performance profiles are available for your aircraft type, and many are supported, we can choose a default profile. The Cessna 172 has six different profiles for cruise flight. We'll choose one to make as our default. You can also create basic performance profiles if ForeFlight doesn't provide any. ForeFlight will automatically populate many other fields such as glide performance, altitudes, weights, and fuel, but be sure to review these and compare them with your aircraft's POH to ensure they're accurate for your flight. You can also add weight and balance profiles to quickly run these calculations before every flight. We won't get into the setup process here, but you can learn all about it in the dedicated weight and balance guide available in the ForeFlight drive within the Documents tab. Finally, specifying your aircraft's filing codes is important if you plan to fly IFR or request flight following on a VFR flight. ForeFlight will also automatically populate these based on the last flight plan filed under this tail number, but it's worth reviewing these for accuracy, especially if the aircraft is a rental. We've really started getting into the nitty gritty of how ForeFlight works, and you're well on your way to taking flight with it. In our next video, we'll look closer at flight and route planning. Until then, work through your app and set up your automatic downloads to make sure the data and regional settings you'll rely on are ready for you on each flight. See you next time.